Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I have another rant for you today. It's one that gnaws at every surface of my being. It disgusts me. It bothers me. It really, really, at the end of the day, fucking pisses me off, man. I I can't lie about it. It's one of those things that just bothers me to no end because it, the fact that this got out is, is bad. It's really bad. But before we jump in, I want to thank you for continued support of our channel. Uh, we greatly appreciate you as you continue to support this channel. Please be sure to like, subscribe, follow, become a member, and also jump on over to Rudy's Rant and subscribe over there as well. Let's just jump right on in on this thing. The New York Yankees just lost the World Series. We all know this. We all know it. But there are things that can come out after a after you play a game and some stuff came out that's utterly embarrassing for the New York Yankees. It's an embarrassment of what just came out. There is a, an article in the New York Post written by Joel Sherman, and the link will be in the description of this uh, video. The Dodgers, and it's titled, The Dodgers Knew the Yankees' Fatal Weakness and Brutally Exposed It. We all know what the Yankees' fatal weakness was because I've talked about what the Yankees' weakness was because I knew what it was because I said what it was. And I said it would be what causes the Yankees to potentially lose a series to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Because if you actually look at the final numbers of this series, the Yankees had a, I mean, albeit it was like this much, the Yankees hit 212, the Dodgers hit 206. The Yankees had nine home runs. The Dodgers had seven. The Dodgers scored 25 runs. The Yankees scored 24. And yet the Dodgers won this series four to one. We all know the Yankees scored 11 runs in game three. I mean, I'm sorry, game four. In game four. But the Yankees, once their bats woke up in game four, you saw a different team. Even in game one, the game that they should have won, they were just as good as the Dodgers. I mean, this this meant this attitude that the Dodgers are just so much better than the New York Yankees is ridiculous. I know a final series at four to one makes you think, oh, they were just way better. No, they were they did the little things better, and that's what made them win. That's what made them better. And I and I and I grant them they are a better baseball team because they do the things that make help teams win. But this report, this scouting report that Dodger players were told about, it's utterly crazy to, to read it because it says it right here, and I will share it with you. What the Dodgers told their players, and I'm going to post it up here. Let me, let me uh, share the screen. Actually, uh, let me do it this way. I like it. Let me. No. Where's that other? What the Dodgers told their players in scouting meetings was the Yankees were talent over fundamentals. That if you run the bases with purpose and aggression, the Yankees will self-inflict harm, as was exposed by Mookie Betts, Tommy Edmond, Freddie Freeman, etc. That that the value was very high to put the ball in play to make the Yankees execute. I want to stop right there. I have screamed for so many so many times for the Yankees to put the ball in play. That putting the ball in play is of great value. You have to put the ball in play. And if you put the ball in play, you make other teams field. You have to make them field the ball. You don't know what can happen. An error can happen, as was the case in this game multiple times. But the Yankees have a tendency of not putting the ball in play. They strike out a whole lot, not just in the in the playoffs, but they strike out at a higher level than they should. Like Anthony Volpe needs to cut his strikeouts by, down by, God, he struck out almost 160 times this year. One thing was 157. He can't, he can't have that number be more than 100. You're 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 a small dude. You're you should be a spray hitter. Stop looking to hit homers. 
try to become a Derek Jeter type of hitter, look the other direct, other way, stuff like that. If he starts to do that, I think it will make it will be huge for him. I, I'll tell you what, if, if Jazz Chisholm is back in the Yankees uniform, it's the same thing. Jazz Chisholm is sitting there trying to hit a ball to the moon. Like, dude, you're 165 pounds. You're not that you're not that dude. You're not that guy. Why are you trying to hit the ball a mile? Put your bat on the ball. Choke up on the bat. Spray singles to right field because I'm sorry, to left field because you're a left-handed hitter. They're playing you to pull because you pull everything. But that's just basic, basic hitting. And I mean, unfortunately, in today's baseball, that is not something that's talked about enough. But when you look at it from a from this perspective, when you look at it from this perspective, you, you see a team that doesn't do the basic things that are necessary to win in a big series like this. Yeah, you can get away with it against the Guardians. You can get away with it against the Royals. But the Dodgers are a different animal. They're di- they're a different animal. And as even the Mets would have been had they been the New York Mets, you can't leave guys on base all the time. You, you, you there, there were so many opportunities that the Yankees had throughout the playoffs to bring runners in with base hits. It's like if the Yankees don't hit a home run, they don't score. And and that's the big problem that the Yankees have when you get deeper into the playoffs. So when you see a report like this, let me pull the report back up. I apologize. Let me push this report back up on the screen. Um, when you when you see a report like this, it, it, it it's concerning because y- you just look at it and and you say, this is what another team thinks of you. This is what they're telling their players, and you guys are professionals. But if you continue, it says they, they, they mentioned that the Yankees were not just the worst, the majors' worst base running team by every metric, but the difference was vast on the field between them and the Padres, who the Dodgers beat in the NL Division Series, but were impressive in that area. The Yankees' base running is horrible, and it's been horrible all season long. This is not new. It's not new. And it's frustrating because you know it's not new as a fan, and you weren't surprised. You were not surprised that what happened happened. You just weren't. You know, so you look at it from that angle as well. And then you look at the continuation. It says they were th- the Dodgers were thrilled at how short Yankee leads were at first base to potentially be less of a threat on pivots at second where Gavin Lux does not excel. Think about that. The Yankees are not taking leads off of first base. They're not threatening. They're not threatening you on the base pass. And it's funny because the one game that they did steal some bases, you saw them effective. It changes. It changes the way a team plays you. But that's also important for a guy like Jazz Chisholm to get on base. But if he's not getting on base, he's no threat. Volpe, another one. He, when he's on base, he has to be a threat to run. But the rest of these guys, for the most part, they can't run. John Carlos Stanton cannot run. Aaron Judge chooses not to run. Glaber doesn't run. Soto doesn't run. Austin Wells doesn't run. Verdugo doesn't run. Like None of these guys run. But they run so little that they don't even take leads off the base that would cause a problem if you're running a, a double play. Like it, 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 it's just it's wild. They said their metrics had the Yankees as the worst positioned outfield. That is such a big thing to look at. The worst positioned outfield. Think about that for a second. Think about that for a second. Is that not the most basic component of coaching? Is that not coaching? And when we criticize Aaron Boone and we talk about how bad of a manager he is, this is an example of it. How can you be a manager and yet the other team thinks that you are the worst position outfield? That means they think that your coaching sucks. Look at what happened where Juan Soto misplays the ball off the wall and turns a double into a triple. Look at the, the situation in which Otani's ball gets over his head for a double in game one turns into a triple or an extra base on an error, but could he have caught that ball if he was positioned better? Where was Judge Where was Judge uh, lined up in center field? Was he shifted over towards right center? 
like these are like Mr. Analytics, Aaron Boone, Mr. Analytics. You're supposed to be the analytical guy, use the book. Are you not using the book to manage how your outfield is lined up? Are you not? I think that's that that is so telling when you when you read an, a, a a scouting report of this nature. They were amazed how many times relay throws came skittering through the infield with no one taking charge and how often Jazz Chisholm, for example, was out of place or just standing still when a play was in action. You know what? Can't blame Jazz Chisholm. Jazz Chisholm doesn't play third base. He was thrown in there because they wanted to have him on the field. He's not a third baseman. For the fact that he played it, I think he played a pretty decent third base considering he played center field or second base. And now you throw him into third base, he's willing to do whatever it takes to play. But look at what happened when Anthony Rizzo wasn't backing up Gleyber Torres on that throw from Soto on the on the Otani double in game one. Ball skitters past, <laughs> skittering past Gleyber Torres, and that's what happens. <clears throat> you know, so... You look at the rest of this story. I mean, they're talking about different, you know, signing or whatever. Um, uh, let me let me go back in this story because there was another thing on here. Um, it says here, when you are in charge of something and you see redundant mistakes, you are either fixing them or condoning them. There is no middle ground at this level. And if you think this is just the fans or reports, it's not. It's the World Series champions. That's what leads into that report. Yes, and I think Aaron Boone condones this shit. He is the problem. Brian Cashman, the problem. When mistake after mistake continue to be made during the season, and they're not corrected because you're talenting, you're you are talented, you're talenting your way to 90 plus wins. It is seeing the tornado outside of town and not evacuating. The Dodgers are eventually blowing through your town. This is a great story, actually. My gosh, this is a great story. I'm going the wrong direction, but when you you know. It, it just it's frustrating because then you read you read off the start of this thing where he mentions um right here a few years ago Mookie Betts was playing balls off the wall in Dodger spring camp spring spring training camp a team official remembers he was working on gathering spinning and making one hop throws to second base when he let out a giant bleep as one throw skittered off the line another outfielder participating saw it as no big deal took one more ball and was done. Betts took about 25 more. The executive recalls because for Betts, nothing is good enough. When asked how often during the season Betts practices balls off the wall, the official said he works on that bleep shit every day. And then in a text message added every day. Think about that. <clears throat> Think about that for a second. Every day. In the losing Yankee clubhouse early Thursday morning, Nestor Cortez, who knew nothing of this story, said, baseball comes down to execution, right? If you don't execute and the other team does does it better than you, then they're obviously going to win. And that's what we ran into this, this series, where they execute a lot of plays. And I've said since game one and two, it felt like they did everything right. They have Mookie Betts in right field. Every ball off the wall, he kept it to a single. And just like, and just stuff like that. It's like you can't capitalize on them. And when we made mistakes, they capitalized. So that's massive. It's in your face, man. It's it's in your face. The Dodgers are managed better than the Yankees. The Dodgers do the little things and the Yankees don't. And that's what happened in this series. And the fact that there's a scouting report like this about the Yankees is damning. And it's embarrassing. It should they should be embarrassed by this type of report because the fact that this got out on top of that makes it look even worse. But it's embarrassing. And it's a direct reflection of Aaron Boone and Brian Cashman. And the fact that neither of these guys is going to get fired more than likely based on the things that have been released. What's going to change next year? What's going to change next year? Nothing. Nothing is going to change unless the players change. Nothing is going to change when it comes to this. And it's a damn shame because the talent is there. The talent is clearly there. The managing, the caring, the attention to detail, it's not. 
And to me, that's a fireable offense. Beyond losing, when you don't have an attention to detail and the same mistakes continue to happen over and over and over and over again, you should be gone because you don't take this shit seriously enough. And you don't hold your players to a standard of excellence. You don't. And this goes hand in hand with strikeouts and all those different things as well. Put your bat on the ball. Make them play defense. Make them make the play. Mookie Betts is an elite right fielder. And while I don't think he's a better player offensively than Juan Soto, he's a better player than Juan Soto all around. He just is. <clears throat> and he ain't making $700 million. And while I would love the Yankees to re-sign Juan Soto, he has to become a better defensive right fielder. He has to have an attention to detail. He's a young guy. He's 25, 26 years old. He's a young dude. There's time to get better, but he has to want to get better in right field. A guy like Glaber Torres has to want to get better at second base. Just has to. You have to want to do it. Mookie Betts is taking balls off the wall, balls off the wall, balls off the wall. He's doing whatever he got to do to win, to be perfect. He fielded so many balls off the wall against the Yankees that it was just like, Jesus Christ, bro. Christ, man, we're getting a single off a ball off the wall. That's bananas. And it's frustrating because everyone should have that level of detail in their game. You're a professional baseball player making millions and millions of dollars. You should care to that level. And that's why Mookie Betts right now is a champion and the Yankees are not. And I know Soto won a championship as a rookie or whatever he was, 19 years old or 20, whatever year it was. <clears throat> but <clears throat> what does 41 home runs and a 290 batting average and 100 plus RBI do if you give up runs the other direction? This goes for Aaron Judge, too. But Aaron Judge didn't make the mistakes this year defensively. He only had one error, and that was in game five. He didn't commit an error all season. Now, I can't speak for if he's positioned improperly because they're not showing where these guys are positioned in the outfield. That's coaching. That's management. That's that's understanding who you're facing at the plate and how you're pitching them when you face them. Like these all things go together. Like if you're pitch if you're playing to the pull, you can't pitch him away. Because if you pitch him away, you're enticing him to go to hit the ball to the opposite field where that might be the only place he can. Now, yes, if he tries to pull it, he's going to roll it over and be a ground ball, a weak ground ball. But you have to pitch to where you want him to hit, not the opposite. Not the opposite. So that's all I got. I'm just disgusted here reading this type of report because this is something I knew already, but the fact that another team is talking about it in their scouting, the Yankees should be really, really embarrassed by this. We'll see what they do about it. They'll have the, the next four months to think about it. But that's all I got. Appreciate your time. This is Rudy's Rant, you know, powered by coming on the podcast. Facts over feelings. Come on now.